Hey everybody, it's Paul. And since I happen to be standing in the kitchen, I bet you can guess what time it is. If you think it's time to cook something, then you are right. So today we are gonna be cooking a super simple meal that is perfect for kids and anybody else who thinks they don't know how to cook. We're gonna be using the super simplest kitchen gadget ever invented, the crock pot. Any brand will work. You just need something big enough to fit your ingredients in it. Today we are gonna make a beef roast. So this is a meal that we made, uh, we made this years ago. Um, we would go to, let me turn the background so I can talk to you. You don't have to stare at a piece of meat. Um, we, would, uh, we would put this in on Saturday night, late Saturday night, and then we would let it cook all night, overnight. And we would go to church Sunday morning and come home and we would have a delicious lunch already in the crock pot um, with, you know, really no effort on our part. So I'm going to show you uh, kind of a new and updated recipe that I made for this because I used to use a Lipton soup mix pack. Um, you could certainly do that. You could just use uh, any cut of meat roast and then throw the, what is it called? The onion soup, one packet of Lipton's onion soup pack in there and maybe a quarter cup of water and a dash of Worcestershire sauce and it'll make a delicious roast. But I'm gonna do my own ingredients today. So it's gonna be some very simple ingredients. Um, I have a chopped onion here. It's actually chopped in like really big chunks. Um, that's a trick with a crock pot. You wanna use larger cuts of things instead of smaller. I have some garlic, I have some Worcestershire sauce and some salt and pepper. And then of course, I'm gonna use this beautiful chuck roast right here. So I've actually got two pieces, so we're gonna build it sort of like a sandwich in the crock pot. So let's talk about cuts of meat real quick. So for a crock pot cooking, you want to use a tougher cut of meat. Um, using like a real tender piece of beef, since we're gonna use beef, we'll talk about that. Um, you wouldn't wanna put like a filet, uh, filet mignon or flank steak or uh, like a New York strip or a ribeye in the crock pot because that's just gonna be a waste of that meat. You wanna use a really tough piece, like this beef chuck is perfect. Um, it's probably, probably the best cut. Uh, a round would be good, um, a round roast. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Um, I could tell you if I was at Sam's Club staring at the meat case. But anyway, but those are two good cuts to, uh, to be thinking about if you're gonna do a roast. And the good news is they're also probably the cheapest. So let's get my apron on and we'll get to cooking. Okay, I have my apron on. There it is. Along with my Pirates of the Caribbean redhead shirt. So we have all of our ingredients prepped. And this is so simple to make. I'm actually, I'm gonna try this one-handed. So I'm gonna be holding the camera with my left hand. I'm just gonna use my right hand. And I think, I think I'll be able to do this whole thing. So, all right, here we go. First, you take your piece of meat. Now, mine's in two pieces because that's just the way they sold it, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. You just set it in your crock pot like that and kind of squish it down. Because I have to build this kind of like a sandwich, I'm going to use my spoon over here for my salt since I'm not going to dip my meaty fingers in there. And I'm just going to put a decent amount of salt in there. All right, that's less than a, that's less than a teaspoon. I'm going to Hmm, didn't think this through. I've got to wash my hand. Got to rinse my hand off, guys. Coming over to the sink. You're getting to see sink. Washing the hands, one-handed. I told you we were gonna do this, no cuts, one-handed. So you're getting the whole thing. All right, good enough. Just dry my hand off enough so I can go back over here and pick up my pepper. Spray, sprinkle just a little bit of pepper on there. Um, and now we're gonna use our Worcester sauce and I'm gonna add a decent amount to here. I probably wanna get about an eighth of a cup overall of this. This is a pretty strong flavor, but this is gonna add a lot of the flavor. Now we're gonna take a handful of our chopped onions and put them in there. All right, and now we're gonna take our spoon and we're gonna get a little bit of garlic. Just like that. Plop that in, move it around a little bit. I 
we have gotten two spoons because now we have to do the whole thing all over again. Oh, this is a bigger piece of meat. Boy, that's a nice piece of meat. Okay, so we're just gonna put that right in there like that. Move it around so it lays as flat as it can. Perfect, you just wanna be able to make sure you can get your lid on. Sorry, I didn't have that completely centered. Okay, we're gonna rinse our spoon off so we can use it for our salt. There we go. Okay, back over here for our salt. Okay, maybe half a teaspoon on top. Again, with the Worcestershire sauce. And last but not least, we're gonna add the rest of the onions right there on top. Boy, my hands are just all over the place today. I'm sorry if this video is coming out weird. All right, just throw them in like that. And the beauty of a crock pot is this is gonna cook real low, low heat, and for a long period of time. So all the flavors are gonna break down. They're gonna combine together. Um, this meat, while it would be very, very tough if you just like threw it in a frying pan or on the grill and cooked it on a high heat real fast, this kind of meat would be incredibly tough. But when you cook it for like 12 or 14 hours in the crock pot, it's gonna break down and be so tender when it's done. So that's basically it. Um, I'm gonna wash my hand. I'm gonna throw the lid on this. Good morning. Okay, so it's the next morning. I put the roast in at about 10 p.m. and now it's about 7 a.m. So I'm talking a little bit quieter because I'm the first one up, although I'm hearing some stirrings up there. So I'm about to get started on breakfast, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like after cooking overnight in the crock pot. So let's see. You can see it bubbling and simmering in there. I'm gonna put my lid back on in just a second. Let's take a look here. Okay, so it's it's cooked, but it's still a little bit tough. So we're gonna let this co keep cooking for about another five, six hours. And in the meantime, we'll make some side items, I'll make some breakfast and we'll get on with the rest of our day. But really this is the essence of a set it and forget it kind of meal. Our roast is just about done, but while that's finishing up, I figure we'll make some carrots. So I'm gonna go ahead, I have like eight really large carrots here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna chop the ends off. And then because these are such big carrots, I'm gonna chop these in half lengthwise. So they'll cook a lot better. There you go, you can see how, how big that carrot is. <laughs> All right, and then we are gonna cut about an inch to an inch and a half sections of carrot. So these are pretty big. We're gonna roast these so they will shrink so you can have big pieces. All right, so we have some carrots in here. I'm gonna cut up the rest and then we'll move to the next step. Our bowl of carrots has grown in size. Just look how bright and orange they are, how festive they look. Carrots have always been one of my favorite vegetables and I like trying to find new ways to cook them. So this is a recipe I've never tried before, but I'm gonna try it today. Super simple, you just take a couple of tablespoons of olive oil, pour it in there. Now you could mix this up with your hands if you wanted. Um, if you felt brave, you could toss the carrots around in your bowl like that. I'm using a serving spoon just to kind of stir them around, get that olive oil mixed around on these carrots. All right, I think everybody's got a little bit of oil on them now. All right, I'm gonna take my salt and add a generous amount of salt in there. Take my pepper, add some of that. Whoa, that's a lot of pepper. Hopefully that's not too much for Shannon. It looks like it's stuck to one or two pieces. So I think we'll be okay. okay. There we go, pepper's mixing together now on the other pieces, I think we'll be all right. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees. So we do this, stir it around a little bit. 
finish off with just a little bit more salt. And now all we have to do is just transfer our carrots to this baking pan. There we go. Is that there? And then just spread them out in a single layer, in, in a single layer, in a single layer. It's better than a lingual fare. Um, a single layer, spread them out. They can be touching, but you just want to have them where they're not piled on top of each other. There we go. All right, that's what that looks like. And we are going to pop that in the oven for 20 minutes. In the oven they go. Bye-bye. See you guys in 20 minutes. I have some potatoes on the stove for mashed potatoes, and our carrots are in the oven. They are almost done, so I think it's time to get our roast out. Look and how good that looks. I know it doesn't look like much right now. It kind of looks like soup at the moment, but wait till I pull this out. All right, let's see if I can transfer this without making a complete mess. I probably should be wearing my apron for this one, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it dangerously. So I'm gonna use a spoon and a meat fork here. Let's see. We're about to make a mess. Okay, this, so I'm not worried as much about presentation just because Shannon, the kids and myself, we're just gonna tear this apart in just a minute. But if I was trying to get this out, you know, cause I wanted it to look nice on a table for like Sunday dinner or something, that would be a little bit different of a story. I actually probably would use a different shape crock pot for this cut of meat. All right, so there's our top piece and look at how tender that is. It just pulls apart, and I can see it. It just pulls apart with the fork. Let me show you that. I have a smaller fork here. So look at that and there's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna take a ladle and I'm gonna fish out some of this au jus, as well as some of these onions to keep the meat nice and moist. Okay, let's see if the carrots are done. They smell good. All right, that's how they look. Up here. Let's test. Still a little bit firm. The smaller pieces are definitely tender. Okay, so this is what they look like in the bowl. Look how pretty they look. I like them with the little uh, marks from the pan. I have some parsley, I only have a little bit left, but we're just gonna sprinkle that on there. You could also use dill on these. Um, I thought I had some dill, but apparently I didn't. So we are gonna sprinkle that on there and gonna stir them around with my spatula. And that should be good. Okay, so this is what's for lunch. Today, uh, this is not gonna be what's for <laughs> what we're gonna eat, but we have the roast, um, which is not so pretty to look at, but boy, does it smell and taste good. We have our carrots, which are pretty to look at, and we have creamy mashed potatoes. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Paul. We used a new tool, we used a crock pot today, which I now have to clean up. <laughs> so, like I showed you, super simple to use, um, great, great item for people who are working or who are trying to plan ahead for stuff. Um, and also it's a tool that allows you to work on side dishes and not have to worry about a main dish um, or really any kind of dish that's in the crock pot because it kind of cooks itself. You're not gonna overcook something really quickly. I guess you could overcook it if you left it in for hours longer than you should have. Maybe, I don't know, I've never tried. Maybe that would be an experiment one day. Will it crock? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, please leave the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope you guys did enjoy it. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there for a minute. Anyway, I uh, hope you guys leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below um, for suggestions for future videos. I love seeing the suggestions. Um, a lot of people have asked for me to bake something, and I will definitely try that pretty soon. Um, Shannon's giving me a thumbs up in the background. So I think maybe I'll try and bake some cookies or some cake or something. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, leave those suggestions in the comments and I will see you guys next time.